to do it, Sam? Be short one sack of sugar. Won't have that till the freight wagon gets in. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Everybody wants sugar. Well, Christmas pies, Christmas cookies. I've had hop sings been begging for a week. <laughs> hey, Merry Christmas, ma'am. Mm-mm. How'd you like to find out you're stuck, eh? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know, I get sick and tired of hearing that. Christmas is still two weeks away. They're gonna wear it out before it gets it. Next thing you know, they're gonna start celebrating Christmas on Thanksgiving. All the old spirit's gone. It's getting way too commercial. But... Oh, Miss Jones, you're just the one I wanted to see. I've got a lot of dandy things for Christmas. <laughs> hey, you know, Sam, you're right. It's getting way too commercial. Hey, here comes the stage. The whole land is on here. Don't worry, he'll be there. He wouldn't miss the Christmas party. What'd I tell you? Hey! Hey! Hey, hey, Joe. hey good hey, to see you, buddy. Hey, you're you? looking great. You guys look good. Hey, we sure want to thank you for coming down and taking the time oh, out with big job. Yes, sir, it costs us a lot of money. But when Andy gives his word, he always gives it. Ah, driver, that was a very stylish ride. Uncle Thaddeus. I, I want to tell you, my boy, that I rate you more than equal to the finest drivers in Europe. Thank you very much, my good man. <laughs> now, Andy, you take the luggage up to the hotel suite. Uncle Thaddeus, this is Joe and Hoss Cartwright. The Cartwright boys. Well, hello there. Well, I'm glad, man, he's a big and ain't he? Yeah, he sure is. You know, any friend of Andy's is a friend of mine. This is a pleasure meeting you here. Andy, now you go up to the hotel suite and get your rest, you hear? Because playing these benefits for free will sap your strength just like if you was getting money from. Yeah, I, I, instead of staying at the hotel, we figured you'd stay with us out at the ranch. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, but I always got to be near a telegraph office. I got so many big deals on the fire for Andy, not only in this country, but all over Europe. Well, where's the office, by the way? Yeah, it's right around the corner here. Oh, oh I told you. Well, thank you very much. I I'll see you later, boys. See you later. Well, you, you see, Uncle Thaddeus has his own way of doing things. <clears throat> well, things has changed since I was here last time, fellas. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm in show business now, and... Well, I've learned you have to let your manager handle things for you. He's your manager? Yeah, that's right. You got a mess, son of a gun. Hey, how about come over to the saloon and sing a song for us for old times' sake? Old Mike's still on the piano and he ain't changed a bit. Hey, how about it? Come on. Well, look, you guys go ahead, and I want to get this luggage up to the hotel. Well, you know, let's go give you a hand with no, it. No, 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 fellas, I can get it, really. Well, all this stuff, come on, let us give you a hand with the luggage. No, Joe, thanks a lot. Thank you. I'll see you over there, and I'll do that song for you, okay? All right, see you at the saloon now. Don't forget. Okay. Take it then. <laughs> Things sure change for Wendy, isn't it? Yeah, they sure have. Hey, how about a beer? You buying? How about getting a mail? That's my motto. 
You save your vocal cords, you hear? And I don't want you wasting your talents, because talent is a very precious commodity. Am I advice it out? No, please do, Mr. Yes, Gates. Yes, well, Uncle Thaddeus, we were just having a lot of fun, you know, just like old times, huh, Joe? Hey, I'll tell you one thing, we really missed you around here. Hey, how long do you think you can stay? Just long enough to play that charity benefit that you people talking to said to doing. We got a thousand things more important than this. Well, I was hoping we could stay a few days past Christmas. No, I think we'll be heading for Paris a couple of days after Christmas. Paris? All the way to Texas? Paris, France. France? Hey, boy. Andy, that's wonderful. I'm beginning to see why you need a manager. And he ain't the only one to see it. Here, have my card. Thaddeus Cade. Impresario. Ah, oh, yes. I've been doing some big things for Andy. You know, we just finished a two weeks engagement at the famous White Parrot in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, where we didn't get paid. That was just a misunderstanding. I think I explained the whole thing to you. You know, you have to hit a couple of broken rungs on the ladder to get to success. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm thinking of a big European tour for Andy. London, Paris, Rome, the works. Uncle Thaddeus, couldn't we talk about this later? You know, Joe Haas and myself, well, we got a lot of visiting to catch up on. Oh, all right. Go ahead, the three of you have your visit. I'm just a thoughtless old man, but it's because I'm so proud of you. You understand? Go on, go on, the three of you have your visit. Well, Uncle Thaddeus, I didn't mean for you to leave. Oh, fine. You visit with the boys. I, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll be all right. Well, he sort of gets carried away once in a while. But in this business, well, you sort of have to toot your own horn, I guess. Sure you do. You wait till you know him. You're gonna like him as much as I do. Listen, he won't let you sing, but it sure can't hurt your throat to have a beer. What about it? Hey, Cosmo, three beers. Thanks, Oz. It's all right, Joe. No sugar. How you expect Hop Singh to make cookie? Mr. Horse, you try. Mr. Horse, you no get. Trying, getting is a two different thing. Sai here from Nick Hong. Joe, I don't care what you say. I'm still impressed with that fella. Yeah, I think Hop Singh's terrific. Oh, no, not Hop Singh and his uncle. You know what I'm talking about. Who? Hmm. The impresario, Andy's uncle. Andy's mother's brother, yeah. A uh, black sheep of the family, as I recall. Hey, hey, now, did you hear that? Yeah, that tell him about black sheep of the family, right? Well, Andy's father, when he was alive, didn't have too much use for him, as I recall. Oh, no. Oh, no, not now of all times. What's the matter, something wrong? No, it was, well, as a matter of fact, it's something good. You remember that lumber contract we were negotiating? Well, apparently, they want to close the deal. Hey, that's great. Sure, it's great, except they want me to come to San Francisco immediately so we can complete all the necessary paperwork. Well, you can't leave now, not with a charity Christmas party. I'll be back in time for the party, but I'm in charge of most of the arrangements, of a collection of all the pledges. Paul, seeing as you're the chairman of that whole shebang, you could appoint somebody, couldn't you? Yeah, I suppose I could. Hey, well, how about the, uh, how about the widow man wearing? Well, she's done an awful lot for the orphanage. Well, as a matter of fact, she has. If it hadn't been for her, I suppose we wouldn't be building a new orphanage, but... Oh, that woman is probably the most strong-willed woman on the face of the earth. She's already in charge of some of the arrangements. If I left, she'd probably take over complete control. I... I... Horse? I want you to make sure she doesn't take over while I'm gone. I... I gotta see... How come me? Because I've just appointed you to be in charge of all the arrangements for the Ponderosa party while I'm away. Paul, I can't do that. Oh, I... Please don't give me any arguments. If I pack right now, I might still be able to make that stage this afternoon. You but can make Paul, it. Paul, I can't do no that. I... Don't oh, you I... worry about a thing, Paul. You picked the right man for the job. Hey, well, you can handle women. <laughs> Paul! You know, my boy, we're making a big impression in this town. Yes, sir, a big impression. 
Uncle uh, Thaddeus, I, I meant to speak to you about that. Well, go ahead, my boy. Speak up. What's on your mind? Well, this business of impressing everybody. I, I know in San Francisco how important you told me it was, but I grew up around here, and, and I know everybody. Mm-hmm. And they're going to know you better. A lot better. That's part of my job, you know. <laughs> Well, I just wish you wouldn't try to impress Hoss and Little Joe because they're my closest friends. Listen, will you leave the management to me? And remember, it was your idea to come down here and sing for free. Now, you just let your Uncle Thaddeus handle all these things, okay? Yes, sir. If that's what you say, yes, sir. This is Hoss. Uh... After you pick up the supplies, you'll have to go out to the Indian reservation and talk to the, uh, talk to the agent. Paul, I never will get all this done for that Christmas party. Can you help me? I told you, Joe's got plenty of work to tend to with the ranch, and I got a stage to catch. I'll get in. Yes, sir. I never will get all this done, though. No. You'll manage. Oh, listen. I got Sam Bryan down here for a thousand dollar contribution. You make sure that skinflint doesn't give you one dollar less. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Would you mind saying that again? Well, I, I said that Paul has you down for a thousand dollars, Sam. Look, Sam, I, I ain't wanting to collect the money right now. I just, I just want the pledge. We'll collect the money out at the Christmas party at Ponderosa. A thousand dollars. Has Ben Cartwright lost his reasoning? I said I'd contribute to the fund. I didn't say that I would build the orphanage on my own. Now five hundred dollars and not one cent more. Seven hundred fifty. Five hundred. Thanks a lot, Sam. Oh, don't you remember sweet Betsy from Pike? Who crossed the big mountains with her lover Ike? With two yoke of cattle, a large yellow dog, a tall Shanghai rooster, and one spotted hog. They soon reached the desert where Betsy gave out And down in the sand she lay rolling about While Ike half distracted look on with surprise Saying, Betsy, get up, you'll get sand in your eyes A miner said, Betsy, will you dance with me? I will that old horse if you don't make too free But don't dance me hard, do you wanna know why? Dunk on you, I'm chock full of strong alkali Sing goodbye, Pike County, farewell for a while We'll come back again when we've panned out our pile This Pike County couple got married, of course And I became jealous, obtained a divorce Sweet Betsy, well satisfied, said with a shout Goodbye, you old lummox, I'm glad you backed out Sing goodbye, Pike County, farewell for a while We'll come back again when we pan out our pile. Howdy, Hoss. Howdy, Roy. Give me a beer, Cosmo. Ain't you in town kind of late this evening? Seems like uh, every place I went today, you was there. I wish I'd never seen this dead burn town. Oh, Hoss, I hear that you're doing a fine job with the benefit arrangements. Well, maybe you ought to get your ears cleaned out and do a little more hearing. I ain't having no luck at all collecting that $20,000, Roy. Well, if I was you, I wouldn't be a bit discouraged. You, you're just tired, that's all. Dead burn right, I'm tired. You bet your grandma's stocking doing that. Do you ever try to collect $20,000 from this bunch of onion heads? What about that Christmas tree you was going to cut for me? Did I promise to cut a Christmas tree? Oh, come on, Roy, not you, too. You promised to cut me a 25-foot Christmas tree. Oh, Hoss, you're losing your reason? A 25-foot Christmas tree? Out of the question. How about a 15? 20? 15 is the absolute limit. 15. Well, I'll see you at the party. Uh, 15-foot tree. Say, what's the matter there, horse? You look awful down in the mouth. <laughs> Say, anything I can do to help you? No, I don't reckon there's anything anybody can do to help, Mr. Kate. I, I got $20,000 to raise before Christmas Eve, and I'm the one in charge of collecting it. $20,000? Well, that's a sizable amount. But not doing so well, eh? 
I ain't doing worth a hoot. The only thing I am doing is getting blisters on my heels. You know, horse, I took to you the minute I met you. And it grieves me deeply, really, to see you in this bad position. But it sounds to me like it's that you're in need of professional management. Professional management? Well, it's just a thought, you see, but I've handled expositions, big fairs, benefits. Mr. Cade, you mean that you'd volunteer to... Well, yes, yeah, since uh, raising money is one of my particular talents. Boy, Mr. Cade, if, if you'd help me out here, I... Well, you put it that way, I can't refuse you. I figure it's uh, my duty to Andy's friends. Now, uh, the 10% commission, you know, that I get for uh, raising the... You know, that's the total amount of the funds I raise. That seems trivial, doesn't it? 10% of the total. Doggone it, Mr. Kate. I, I reckon I better talk to Paul about that. But you said you were in charge. Now, listen, what this all boils down to, would you rather take 90% of something or 100% of nothing? You know, doggone it, when you put it that way, it sort of makes sense, don't it? <laughs> Mr. Kate. You just lifted $20,000 worth of burden off my shoulders. Son, it's a pleasure to be of service. <laughs> Oz. Oz, you didn't. Tell me you didn't. I most certainly did. Paul's going to be mighty proud he left me in charge of this hot pit, too. Oh, yes, he certainly He's going to be mighty proud when he has to make up that 10% you promised to pay Thaddeus Cade. Oh. Joseph. When a man is left in authority, he has to make decisions, and he has to make them quick and snappy like that. And I've made mine, and I'll stand on it. So did Napoleon at Waterloo. Mr. Cade, I don't want you to be discouraged over Sam Bryant, because he's probably just one of the tightest fellows you'll ever meet in your old life. Paul hit him down for $1,000, and all I could get him to pledge was 500 my boy, I never seen a turnip yet I couldn't get blood out of. Lead me to him. Good. Come on. You know, Miss Jones, I wish all my customers had as good a taste as you do. You know, you think about those carpet slippers and that throat brooch. Christmas just comes once a year, you know. Merry Christmas, Mr. Bryant. Uh, good morning. Hi, Sam. Sam, I don't think you've had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Thaddeus Cade. This is Mr. Sam Bryant, Mr. Cade. Uh, Mr. Cade here is a professional impresario, Sam, and I've just employed him to sort of manage our orphanage fund. I thought we'd gone through that. Mildly checking, Mr. Bryant. Mildly checking. Yeah. I talked to your chief competitor, uh, Herb Maxwell, I believe. And he very generously contributed $1,000. Of course, he said your business wasn't quite up to his. <laughs> oh, he did, did he? That customer-stealing, backbiting, so-called storekeeper, I do twice the business Herb Maxwell ever thought of doing. Put me down for 1500 I knew you were a giant of commerce the minute I saw you. <laughs> oh, uh, come to think of it, uh, Mr. Maxwell, you know, paid in cash. <laughs> well, how do you think I'm going to pay? You wait right there. Uh, Mr. Cade, did, did Herb Maxwell pay us in cash? He will, my boy. He will. I tell you, Mr. Cade, you've, you've done a mighty good job up now. I feel like I gotta warn you about this next old sister you're gonna meet. Her name is Manware, Widow Manware. She's probably one of the most headstrong women you'll ever run into in your whole life. And she ain't altogether happy with my Paul putting me in charge of this shebang. As a matter of fact, she ain't happy unless she's running the whole show herself. And she's gonna try to take your job away from you. Important lady, is she? Yeah, and we're gonna have to put up with her. That Bernie, she's sort of the social leader around here. See, her husband made one of the biggest silver strikes in the whole history of Virginia City. When he died, he left her with five or six million dollars, I reckon. And she's pretty generous for social affairs like this, like this orphanage fund drive and all. Six million dollars? Shucks, horse. She can't be all bad. She sounds like a pillar of society to me. Yeah. Come on, let's go see her. All right. <laughs> Help me out, son, will you? I'm not the dashing young lieutenant that I used to be. <laughs> See, I
Yes? May I help you? May you help? Mrs. Manwaring, after all you've done for this community? Well, I've tried to do my part. <laughs> your part? Don't you think I've heard of your fame? How much can you work? And the way you've labored here for sweet charity. How do you keep yourself looking as fresh as a buttercup? Well, it is trying at times. Of course it is. That's why I assisted that Mr. Cartwright enlists some professional help. Oh, pardon me. I forgot to introduce myself. My card. Thaddeus Cade, empresario. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to offer my uh, humble help, if I may, as I suggested to Mr. Cartwright, especially I've heard that your fundraising campaign has been progressing a bit slowly. <laughs> slowly? If Hoss Cartwright knew what he was doing... I know, I know, but it's wrong to expect professional management from him. You mean you would take over the management of raising the campaign fund? Only with your approval, my dear lady. That is a completely wonderful idea. It's just the sort of thing I would have thought of myself. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you see it that way, Ms. Manwaring, but there's something else you ought to know. Boss Cartwright, you're interrupting. That's simply wonderful. Well, Mr. Cage, you don't know what this means to me. Mm. And as a campaign, of course, professional management. It's a wonderful idea. Thank you, my darling, for your confidence. And now, if you'll excuse me, there's work to be done. Will you excuse me? Thank you so much again. <laughs> oh, mercy. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. I'm... Oh. I'll uh, see you in a minute, Mr. Cade. Uh, this man wearing this, still something you need to know. You know, he, he don't work free. Such a fascinating man. Yeah, yes, he is. Uh, Ma'am, he charges a commission, 10%. Well, Mr. Kate is a professional manager. He's entitled to a commission. Well, doggone it. That's kind of the way I saw it, too. But my little brother was all upset Such a about fascinating it. man. Yeah, well, uh, good day, ladies. Fresh as a buttercup. <laughs> my. Singing. Don't let me interrupt. <laughs> Uncle Thaddeus, I, uh, I wanted to speak to you about something. Well, go ahead. Feel free to speak. What is it? Well, it's about my singing in the saloon last night, Uncle Thaddeus. Wonderful performance. What are your very best? Uncle Thaddeus, Mr. McBride is a friend of mine, and and all the people who were there were my friends. I, I sang because I wanted to. Your performance showed it. What I mean is, I didn't want to be paid for it, Uncle Thaddeus. I sang because I wanted to. You charged Mr. McBride for that performance. Of course I did. You're a professional, so am I. And professional people don't offer their services for nothing. And is that why you're charging Hoss Cartwright 10% commission to handle that benefit fund? Oh, that. Don't you realize how that makes me feel? Andy. I don't expect you to understand everything I do. Your pa couldn't understand me either. But your ma did. And you know something? You're a lot like her. What a remarkable woman she was. She's always singing and laughing and... Well, she was a dreamer, and so am I. But I have to be practical like your pa was, too. <laughs> 
What I'm trying to say to you, Andy, is you realize I'm the only living relative that you got left. So I figure that I kind of got to fill in for both your ma and your pa. Do you understand that? Yes, Uncle Thaddeus. At least I try to. Of course, I'm not everything that an uncle should be. I, I get a little loud from time to time, and I stress the truth now and then. And well, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to understand. Say that song you were humming when I came in. That was your mother's favorite, wasn't it? Sing it for me, would you? For free. No commission. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. There's a walk I've been wanting to take. Christmas. But it don't mean much without you being here. I've tried to live the way you taught me, and, and I've tried hard to understand Uncle Thaddeus. Well, I know he means well, and he's been awful good to me. Please help me be good to him. got a telegram. Paul's gonna be on the news stage. Hey, that's good news. He sure cut it close, ain't it's a nice Christmas Eve. Yeah. Doggone, that's gonna be some party. <laughs> I 
can't only wait to see the expression on Paul's face when he finds out what a good job I've done. <laughs> I just don't understand how you could do it. I just don't understand how you could give away 10%. But, Paul, Mr. Cade is an impresario. I don't care if he's a man of the moon. This is, this is not a business deal, it's charity. People are donating their time, their money. Paul, he's done a marvelous job. He's already collected $20,000 and in cash. Did you say in cash? That's right. Where's the cash? Well, he's got it, of course. He's got it, of course. You were supposed to collect the pledges, not the cash. The cash was supposed to be delivered here tonight at the party. Paul. Mr. Cade knows about these things, and he explained it to me this way. He said that very often people will pledge money, but they never show up with the cash. They never show up with the cash. Well, you just better make sure that he shows up with the cash. For all you know, he may be halfway to San Francisco right now. Oh, Paul, he wouldn't do a thing like that, good gracious. Well, he'd better not do a thing like that, Hoss. Because, my friend, you are still in charge. <laughs> After all, you're the chairman. I did ask him. He didn't bring it with him. He didn't? No, he didn't. Well, I'll go over and take him right into town. We'll get that money. No, no, don't do anything like that. Don't want to embarrass Andy. <laughs> when I get a chance to, maybe I'll have a word with him alone. Good idea. Ben? Yes, Hattie? Ben, it's time for Andy's song. Now, I want this party to proceed just as I scheduled it. Mr. Cade has done so much. Now, we must do our part. Yes, sir. I'll introduce Andy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, well, I've been uh, watching the weather, and I've been hoping we'd have a white Christmas, but it looks as if we're not going to have any snow this season. But we have something even more wonderful than snow. Yes, sir. Virginia City's favorite singer has come home from San Francisco to sing for us tonight. And here he is, Andy Walker. falling everywhere it's the season to be jolly so they say home is where I want to be on Christmas home is far too many miles away I can hear the children sing and the happy sleigh bells ring and for everyone, it's quite a holiday. Home is where I want to be on Christmas. And home is far too many miles away. I've traveled much too far. I've wondered night and day Although I haven't written They know I'm on my way Happy folks will have a go Underneath the mistletoe People everywhere will chase their care Home is where I want to be on Christmas Home is 
far too many miles away Home is where I want to be on Christmas And home is far too many miles away you dropped in. You know, we haven't had much of a chance to visit. <laughs> no, we haven't. I've been looking forward to having a little talk with you. Oh, I know what you're going to say, and I, uh, I want to tell you that I appreciate your concern for my welfare. <laughs> but you see, this work has to be done. It just has to be done. Efficiency. That's my middle name, you know. <laughs> well, you have been very efficient, Mr. Kate. I must say that, and I, I want again to congratulate you on the wonderful job that you've done. Of course, the sooner you get the money to us, the sooner we get to work in the orphanage. That's why I figured I have to work tonight. Now, as soon as I get all this work up, I'll go into town, I'll get the money, and then I'll start rucking side on the vouchers. <laughs> sure wish you'd brought the money with you tonight. I wouldn't pack this kind of money at night. Road agents shouldn't break on. No, no. This money's my responsibility. I know how important it is. <laughs> important. That's the very word, Mr. Cade. I'm glad you realize it, too, because those children downstairs, did you see their faces? The glow of excitement? Do you feel the spirit of joy in this house tonight? And all because of what you have done. Think of it, Mr. Cade. You are providing food and shelter for those children, something that some of them have never had before. I've given an awful lot of thought to what this much money can do. Now I must get back to my paperwork because I don't want anything to slip now. <laughs> Neither do I, Mr. Cade. Neither do I. for your story. Isn't the party going splendidly? It's just as I planned it. Oh, children, why don't you get out? Oh, that's right. Let Mr. Cartwright sit there. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, you know, the story I'd, I'd, I'd like to read to you is about, uh, what's about a mean old man whose name was Scrooge. You're not here by yourself. There's nothing wrong, is there? Oh, no, no, Joe. Nothing's wrong. I, uh... I was just doing a little thinking, that's all. Hey, why don't you, why don't you come on inside? Pa's gonna start the reading. No, no, you, uh, you go ahead. I, I'd like to stay out here in the fresh air for a minute. You sure? Yeah. Okay, I'll see you inside, then. Could I talk to you for a minute? Uh, I have to get the campaign headquarters. I have to get the accounting finished up. <laughs> It'll only take a minute, Uncle. Well, uh, just for a moment. I, I have my responsibilities, you know. <laughs> and poor Bob Cratchit had to bundle all up, 
because Scrooge wouldn't let him buy any coal. And if anyone even so much as mentioned Christmas, Scrooge would yell, Bah! Humbug! But when I saw the way you handled the benefit and the way everybody in Virginia City took to you, I realized I'd been all wrong about you, Uncle Thaddeus. Uncle Thaddeus, I don't want to be a stone around your neck. I know what family means to you and everything, but I have no right to expect you to waste your talents on me. I'm young yet, and, well, I have a lot of time ahead of me. Really, what I'm trying to say, Uncle Thaddeus, is I thought I understood you, but I guess I really didn't at all. You see, I thought it was you who needed me. Now I realize you don't need anybody. But uh, that, let, let's talk about that later. I, I have to get to work. I promised these people a full accounting within three days. But that's exactly what I mean, Uncle Thaddeus. You're just like Ma. You're always thinking about other people. I know how anxious you are to see the orphanage started, but can't you just take time to stay for the rest of the party? It's Christmas Eve, Uncle Thaddeus. Just think about yourself for once. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. You like that? Huh? Huh? Did you enjoy that? Huh? Did you really enjoy that? Well, look over there! Oh! <laughs> Merry Christmas, Uncle Thaddeus. Merry Christmas. Holy buttercup. I must be out of my mind. Help me down, son. Follow me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, I... I've been accused many times of making theatrical entrances, and I sincerely hope that I'm making one tonight. In this portfolio, I have $20,000 in cash. Now, I told Hoss Cartwright, I said it'll take me at least three days to do my accounting and straighten up all the odds and ends. But, folks, that was just a ruse. I planned all along to bring this money here tonight to give to you at this wonderful little gathering. Now, ain't you ashamed of yourself, Ben Cartwright? Oh, come on. Santa Claus, you've devoted your life to doing nice things for little children. Santa Claus, I'm going to give you a chance to do even more. Here's a present for you, Santa Claus. Give it to you by these wonderful people from Virginia City. And as my contribution, folks, I want you all to know I'm not taking out my commission. <laughs> Say here. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, Hoss. Excuse me. Thaddeus, well, you were just wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, I was wondering, would you consider being my business manager? My dear lady, how could I possibly say no? Oh, dear lady, when I look in your beautiful eyes, I see six million <laughs> buttercups. Thaddeus. Hattie. May I call you Hattie? Oh, please do. Dear, dear manager. <laughs> uh, um, excuse me just a minute. Uh, Andy, could I speak to you just a minute? Please? Andy, you know, I brought you a long ways. Yes, sir, Uncle Thaddeus, I know you have. But as you were saying outside, a man does have to fly on his own wings. <laughs> now, Andy, this may come as a shock to you, but all my life I've wanted a home. And I, I think I've found one here. Now, don't think I'm running out on you because, well, I'll, I'll keep in touch. <laughs> Uncle Thaddeus, I don't want another manager. Now, no tears, son. Remember, you're a grown man. Look! Andy, it's beginning to snow! It's snowing. Yeah. We're gonna have a white Christmas after all! 
<laughs> Gabe. That is. I want to thank you for everything you've done. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> oh, it was a whole lot. I thank you for it. Thank you. Andy, shall we, uh... Well, if I don't sing something, I think I'm just gonna burst. <laughs> oh, well, kids, gather around here, huh? Santa, you spent all your presents? <laughs> Merry Christmas, Paul. Uh, Mr. Cartwright. Merry 